Joining us this morning is Senator Marco Rubio. Good morning, Senator. Thanks for spending time with us. Good morning. Thanks. Let's start with your concerns about how COVID hospitalizations are reported. We know the CDC director clarified there are a lot of COVID patients in the hospital for something other than COVID, but hospitals are filling up in some cases. So how do you think government should balance that information to the public? Well, first of all, let me tell you why it's relevant. It's relevant because it gives you an indication as to the severity of the illness. We make public policy decisions about what should close, what should open, who should go back to work, and who shouldn't on the basis of how bad something is. And clearly, how the hospitalization trends are not as bad as they were for Delta or any of the other variants. That's a fact. And the truth is, it's not just Florida. Massachusetts has now started to report the difference between those admitted with COVID and for COVID. New York is the same. And multiple Florida hospitals, I think, have begun to do so as well. That doesn't mean that a patient that's in the hospital because of a broken leg but happens to have COVID doesn't have to be treated a little different and to put strain on a hospital in that sense. But there's a big difference between the hospital being overrun by patients that are there because COVID is the primary diagnosis and patients who are there but are members of the general population and happen to have COVID, even though they're there for some other reason, like a car accident. Look, if, if cases are surging among people out in the street, cases are obviously gonna surge among staff and they're gonna surge among the people that are being admitted to hospitals. Uh, so that, that's important. And I, and I think that distinction is important because it gives you indications about how severe this is compared to other variants. Uh, Senator, there's also a debate in this country right now over vaccine mandates from the federal government. You've introduced legislation to oppose these. So what are your biggest concerns when it comes to the state of Florida? Well, I think the biggest concern is that you shouldn't be firing people over, over vaccines because they refuse to take a vaccine. Look, I'm vaccinated. I think everyone should get vaccinated. I've encouraged everyone I know to do so, but I don't believe the government should force you to do it. And I don't believe that you should get fired from your job for not doing it. Um, we, we admit we, we allow people to come into this country illegally and stay and they're not we don't ask if they're vaccinated or force them to get vaccinated. But the Border Patrol agents get fired from their job if, if they're not vaccinated. You know, their hospitals and other health care facilities are now asking COVID positive staff to come into work after two or three days. Uh, but they'll fire them if they're not vaccinated. So there's a lot of ridiculousness here. And at the end of the day, we are, this is a free country, and you can't be telling people what to do and, and, uh, when it comes to a vaccine like this, especially something that's been on the market now for about a year. And you know, the president's leading a push right now this week to expand voting rights. On this issue, really, the two parties could not be farther apart, voting rights versus security. What's most important to you here? Well, there is no voting rights issue. It's all made up. There is no suppression of minority votes in this country. We had historic voting turnout in 2020 um, across the country. More people voted. It's never been easier to vote than it is today in America. In Florida, for example, you can vote by mail. You can vote two weeks out uh, by advance. You can vote on election day for 12 hours. It's never been easier to register. They register you coming right out of high school. You can register at a post office at your local library. So the truth of the matter is that this is all made up. This is, a, this is all designed to have the federal government take over elections and make it a national mandate that every state has to offer ballot harvesting, every state has to offer same day registration. States can't have restrictions on voter ID or require voter ID. This is all an effort to federal election because Democrats believe that putting that creating election day chaos uh, will make it likely for them to win races. So this is an invented crisis for political purposes. Meanwhile, the real crisis, empty store shelves, hyperinflation, Russia on the verge of invading Ukraine, China threatening Taiwan and the United States broadly. All these real issues are being ignored. You took me right to our next question. That is about inflation. I've heard it from a lot of people. People are concerned about inflation. Everything in our daily four lives almost costs more these days. We know there's not an instant fix. So what should government do here? Well, I think the first thing is it needs to stop making it worse. And, and clearly, I think this is a country we need to begin to make more things in the United States. Uh, part of the challenge we have is supply chain driven. The less there is of something and the more people want it, the more they're going to charge for it. And we just don't make enough things in America. And we rely on too many things that are made in China. We need to reverse that. The other is workers. Look, if you're telling people, we have people in this country that are being told, do not come into work, even if they test positive, because their kid happened to have tested positive three or four days ago, even though the kid has no symptoms, the person has no symptoms, they tested negative, and they're still telling them, stay home for 10 days, stay home for seven days. Well, that means less workers. The harder it is to find workers, the more you have to pay those workers. The more you have to pay those workers, the more you have to charge your customers and your clients uh, or, or your suppliers uh, and so forth. And so it becomes a real challenge for inflation. Government policies are driving that. That's not the only thing behind it. That's a big part of it. The other is the amount of money that the federal government wants to pour and has poured into the economy. You put all this money into the street chasing limited or less number of goods, 
inflation is going to go up. So I think government has to stop making things worse. And so far, everything the Biden administration is doing would make it has made it and will make it worse. I want to finish with this about 30 seconds. You've been in uh, Washington for a while. How do you sense the climate is right now with midterms approaching in the Senate? Well, very political, as you can see, not good in that sense. Some big issues that are being ignored uh, because of this drive to do the Build Back Better Socialist Plan, which they can't get through. Now this push on this fake um, uh, issue of voter suppression, uh, the, the hy hyperbole surrounding last week's ceremonies around January 6th, a terrible day for sure, but certainly I think exaggerated for political purposes as well. So I, I think it's a bad climate, unusually bad, unfortunately, and I think that's ultimately bad for this country. But, you know, listen, these guys, the Democratic Party did not win. Uh, this is an evenly divided country. They didn't get the sort of majority. They, they have a Thai Senate, a very narrow majority in the House. They didn't get a mandate to fundamentally transform America, and now they're trying to ram through a transformation, but they don't have the votes for it, so they want to change the rules to do it. That's the fundamental challenge here, and it's creating a, a very difficult climate right now, unfortunately. Uh, Senator Rubio, got to leave it there. Really appreciate your time this hey, morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, coming up this morning on.